What's up developers, it's Dario here and today I want to start off with my Tailwind Crash Course since I've used it in previous videos but I never created a course and I thought it was time to do so. Before we continue on, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. So if you are interested to join, the link is in the description down below. On my channel, I've used a little bit Tailwind before without explaining it in depth. And that was actually something that kept bothering me. Therefore, I decided to create a Tailwind course. I expect all of you guys to understand what CSS is, how it works, and what you can do with it. You don't need to be a pro in it, and I'm definitely not going to ask you to create a slick website with keyframes and so on. But it is good to understand what most of the basic stuff is, since I'm not going to cover CSS elements. So what is Tailwind? Tailwind is a CSS utility framework that makes your life as a front and backend developer a lot easier. And yes, I'm saying as a backend developer as well, since you don't need to write your own CSS anymore. You can see Tailwind as a predefined CSS file where you find loads of CSS classes that you can use to style your elements by just adding classes inside your HTML tags. And that doesn't mean that you need to learn every single class name out of your head. Tailwind code is very, very easy to understand. If you practice it a little bit, you will see a pattern in the class names and you will get used to it really quick. A big go for me is the official documentation of Tailwind on their website, where you can find all the styling of a specific topic if you search it in the navbar. But that's something for another video. As you can see on my screen right now, we have one file open, which is the example.html file, which is the .html extension, and you can see that we added classes inside our div, anchors, and image tags. And that's what Tailwind does. Just like any other framework, there are advantages and disadvantages by using Tailwind. And I'm not the type of developer that says that you need to use Tailwind instead of Bootstrap or whatever. Just like any other framework, there are advantages and disadvantages. I'm not the type of developer that says that you need to use Tailwind instead of Bootstrap or whatever. In my opinion, every language or framework has its own advantages and disadvantages. In my personal opinion, a huge advantage of Tailwind is the fact that it is very easy to prototype, iterate and customize. You can easily change something like your font size without harming the rest of your application. Choosing Tailwind over vanilla CSS makes the process so much faster since you don't need to write down every single styling in your application, especially for backend developers. To keep it polite, creating your own CSS is a pain in the butt. Therefore, using built-in classes will make your development phase a lot easier. The last advantage that I will mention is the fact that you can add specific behavior in particular cases. Inside vanilla CSS, you need to define your hover in a new set of styling. But in Tailwind, you can easily add the hover prefix which will apply hover on a specific element. Now that we have talked Tailwind into heaven, I must admit that there are some cons when using Tailwind, especially if you're new to it. Don't worry, the developers that are working on Tailwind are incredible since they update it on a regular basis. With Tailwind, you're going to add your CSS classes inside your HTML markup. And I remember when I started using Tailwind, it was honestly pretty annoying to read my HTML code because it might get a bit cluttered. I tried to create the best code example as possible, and as you can see on my screen, it can be very annoying to find, let's say, your border bottom, which is the border B in the first div that we got. If you are a developer that haven't worked with CSS before, it might be difficult at the beginning to get a good understanding of what everything means. Most people rely on a framework like Bootstrap that will do the work for you. In my previous videos where I've used Tailwind, I've got a ton of reactions from people asking me why I chose to use Tailwind instead of Bootstrap. And to be honest, there is a big difference between Tailwind and Bootstrap. Whenever you write Bootstrap, you're using classes whose name describe how they are going to be used. You use names such as a container, role, call, card, and it's a little bit different in Tailwind since you're creating a single styling for a specific element. Now let me show you an example in code. Let's say that you want to create a primary button inside your application. In Bootstrap, you create something like this a button with a class of btn and another class name called btn-primary. If we create the same exact button in Tailwind, you can see that the class name of your button is a bit longer. You have a background color of 500, you have a hover statement, you have text-white, 
the font is bold, the padding Y axis is 2, the padding axis 4, and the border is rounded. Bootstrap looks simpler, but the BTN that's being used is predefined, and that's something that does bother me every once in a while. You don't want to use the same exact button for every scenario. What if you want to make your button different? That's why I prefer Tailwind over Bootstrap. And don't roast or hate me, I'm saying that I prefer Tailwind over Bootstrap. If you have a different opinion, comment down below why. Now it looks pretty easy, right? To add a class of BTN, BTN-primary to your Bootstrap class. But have you ever thought about what goes on behind the scenes? If we take the same exact button and show the classes, you can see a lot of styling elements right here inside the .btn and the .btn-primary. If we compare this to Tailwind, for instance, you can see that we have six different classes that we called, and all of them have one or two lines of styling added to it. This was it for this video. In the next video, I want to set up Tailwind inside a new project. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.